Chief Mitch Randles came to the fire, Temple Fire and Rescue in August of 2014 after retiring 23 years of, after retiring with 23 years of service with the Joplin, Missouri, Missouri Fire Department. He has been in the public safety field for over 28 years and has served as a firefighter, paramedic, and law enforcement officer. His education includes an MBA, BSBA in management, AA in fire science, and is a graduate of the National Fire Academy Executive Fire Officers Program and holds a chief fire officer designation. Chief Rannells is married to his wife of 27 years, Susan, and has two children, Sabrina, 19, who is a student at Temple College, and Kevin, who is 22 and lives in Mississippi with his wife, Rachel. So with that intro, again, Chief, welcome to the show. It's always a pleasure to uh, get to meet people of prominence in the, in the area who hold an important position. And what I do with all my guests, Chief, I always write down a set of questions because I never want to put anybody in the hospital. I want you to get the uh, opportunity to give a good, thorough answer. So what I'm going to do, I sent you some questions, and we're just going to read them one through wh- however many I've got. Sure. And uh, feel free to make any comments. Stop me. Shut me up. Um, say, oh, no, that's not right, okay? So with that, okay. with that, let's go on. Chief, question number one. I personally don't think the majority of the people realize how important a fire chief is. They always hear about the police chief because of all the crazy stuff going on in society lately. So with this opportunity, can you please explain why the position of fire chief is so important and what are the duties and responsibilities of a fire chief? Well, sure. Um, You know, my primary duty is to make sure that the citizens of Temple are protected. Um, And where I differ from the police chief is, um, you know, we're protecting them from fire, uh, medical emergencies, uh, traumatic emergencies, uh, such as car wrecks and and what have you. And just basically everything that uh, that law enforcement or one of the other departments in the city can't handle, that kind of falls into to our privy. And, uh, you know, we do hazardous materials and trench collapse. And uh, here lately, a lot of swift water rescue yeah, and, sure. and uh, you know, flood rescue. And, and so just any of those things that uh, there's not a spe- another specialty for out there that kind of falls to the fire department i was going to say that i was, I was going to ask you you know funny question in the sense of sarcastic question being uh-huh. you know with all this water do you have to worry about fire anymore well no not really you got all these different things you have to worry about for, with water rescues um what about saving kittens from trees? Um, you know, that's one of those things that comes up from time to time. We uh, we actually don't uh, routinely rescue cats from trees. Um, but would you if you had to? Um, I, I will tell you, over my course of my career, I've done about a half a dozen cats from trees. <laughs> you uh, heard it here, everybody. You heard it here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, normally the cats will come down on their own, and, and uh, normally getting us involved just makes the matter worse for the cat. So. Okay, gotcha. So don't call him up for a uh, cat rescue. He'll, the cat will come down on their own. All right. Chief, because time is limited, I'm going to move on. Number sure. two, there are many things to consider when it comes to fire safety that people could unintentionally overlook. In your opinion or factual data, what is the most overlooked safety precaution when it comes to fire safety or prevention? Well, I think uh, you know one of the things I want to mention, especially since today is uh, fallback day, um, and so we're supposed to turn our clocks back, is smoke detectors. Um, obviously, today is the day you need to change your smoke detector battery uh, so that it is fully functional. Um, you know, they silently set on your wall or ceiling and, and uh, guard your family. And so it's very important to have them in operational order. And uh, that is very simple to do. And that is just to replace uh, the battery, either AA or AAA or 9 volt, um, and put a fresh one in there for, for the next six months or so while we're uh, not in daylight savings time. Uh, and I think probably the other thing is just the fact that folks don't realize that uh, an emergency will strike them at some point in time in their life. Uh, you know, statistically, everyone has a major event, some sort of a major event that the fire department gets involved in at least once or twice in their lives. And, and I don't think many people realize that. Uh, it's always the, uh, the thought of, well, that's not going to happen to me. It's going to happen to someone else. And uh, I'm here to tell you that that's not always the case. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you heard from the chief. That's why we put him in the pep section, not the topic of interest section. Pep, (laughs) practice or preparedness eliminates panic. Now, Mm -hmm. chief, number three, since you said smoke alarms, we should mention that the years, this year's theme is hear the beep where you sleep. Mm -hmm. Since about half of the deaths from home fires happen between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. when most people sleep, Mm -hmm. smoke alarms then become extremely important. Can you tell us... um, all we need to know about the care and installation of smoke alarms. Now, you mentioned a part of it. Is there anything else when it comes to equipment like fire extinguishers, et cetera? Um, sure. You know, with the, with the smoke alarms, make sure your smoke alarm is not older than 10 years old. And uh, if you open it up, there should be a date on it and, and look at it. And uh, um, it should never be more than, than 10 years old. 
Um, if it is, then you need to get a new one. And if you don't have the means to get a new one, uh, contact us down at the Temple Fire Department, and we will get you one. Uh, they are that important. Wow, that's great to know. So yeah. ser- seriously here, if somebody is truly not able to purchase one, how do you tell that's somebody correct. who's trying to you know, scarf one up for free as compared to somebody who's really desperately in need one? Well, I, I mean, you know, most folks will, are honest about it, and, and if they are in need, we'll come in. And, and you know, we're, we're not going to turn anyone away, but, um, you know, if you come in and ask for 20 smoke detectors, obviously you're not going to get 20 smoke <laughs> detectors from us. So, uh, you, you know, it, it's very very important that you put one in your home, but, you know, if you're a landlord or something along those lines, you know, you can't get them from us to, to put in every one of your apartments. You know, you should take, uh, uh, you, you know, you should go out and, and purchase the ones for uh, well, you know, if they're for a land, if they're a landowner or a property, owner for an apartment complex they should be having a cash cow with money coming in they should be able to afford their own okay chief let's talk about cooking in general Mm -hmm. and about the upcoming holidays when it comes to cooking what are the concerns and dangers when it comes to cooking Sure. Um, obviously, one of the things that uh, always comes up every year is deep frying turkeys. Yeah, um, so. That's uh, that's a pretty uh, popular thing to do, and uh, and it can be safe, but uh, you definitely have to follow the instructions when you do that. Um, you know that uh, turkey needs to be as dry as possible because anytime you put water in the grease, you get a reaction from it, and so that is key, man. Yeah. That's big time. Uh, next, you do not want to uh, to overfill your fryer, obviously. Um, you don't want to have your fryer out on a like a wooden deck or right next to your home. You want to put it out in your middle of your yard and on a uh, uh, you know a non flammable surface like a concrete patio or something, uh, and then lower it in slowly, obviously. Uh, and then just you know in your normal uh, k- kitchen and and other cooking uh, uh, as the holidays come about, uh, you, you know just be mindful of where you. Put down your towels and your rags and uh, and always be in attendance. Don't uh, put something on to cook and then leave the room or, or leave the house for photos or something like that. If you're going to have to leave and not uh, be watching the, the cooking that's going on, then wait until you're done before you start cooking. Chief, what's the deal with the turkeys? I mean, mm-hmm. is that a Texas thing or is that all over? I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant to this. Mm-hmm. It's a Texas thing. Uh, no, no, no. It's all over. Uh, they happen all over the United States. We had some of these fires up in Missouri where I'm from, and so um, it's pretty much nationwide. Okay. All right. All right. This one's for the children, Chief. Mm-hmm. Who is Sparky, and what is Sparky's job when it comes to fire prevention? Well, Sparky is one of the the uh, the dogs uh, or the mascots of the National Fire Protection Association, um, and we actually happen to have our own Sparky here in Temple. Um, he makes several of our fire prevention activities uh, throughout the year, including our big fire safety day, which happened back on October 3rd. Um, and his, uh, his purpose in the, in the message is to get kids more comfortable with uh, firefighters and, and the fire equipment. A lot of times, you know, we're pretty scary to kids because we're big and we're loud at, in everything we do. And, uh, and so it's to give that kind of softer side of the fire service and, and uh, re- relax the kids around, around that, uh, that dog and that mascot. So you're going to the schools with spark here they're coming to the firehouse sure uh, both uh, he's been to both he he does stuff around the firehouse and then he also goes to the schools from time to time so and i think that would be pretty good again yeah. accustomed to it before it ever happens okay what about halloween today today's halloween adults and children in costumes candles and fireplaces all around what does one do if one of those costumes accidentally catches fire because of either the wood stove or the cooking on the stove or whatever what do you do well hopefully everybody's aware of this one and that is stop drop and roll as we were taught as kids and uh, as we still teach kids uh, you know if you do have a costume that catches on fire uh, you know stop where you are drop to the ground and and roll until that fire's put out um, and uh, you, you know once you've got that fire out then get that costume off it could still be smoldering um, and you don't want to run the risk of it reigniting so you know get out of that thing and especially and, with these uh, one synthetic type of uh, costumes they just melt right on you right? A- absolutely and and you know they're all marked and they're all treated with a fire resistant uh, uh, process but uh, remember it's fire resistant nothing is truly fireproof everything will burn um, and even fire resistant treated items will burn uh, just not as readily as they would if they weren't treated now, there's a lot of things to think about everybody so this is great we got them on here cheap on this one, all I'm going to say is live Christmas trees. Any comments? <laughs> well, um, you, you know, I'm as big a fan of a live Christmas tree as anybody else, but they are extremely dangerous if not uh, properly cared for. I'm surprised they even let them do it as dangerous as they are. I mean, I like them too, but sure. 
Um, you, you, you know, they, they, uh, it, there's nothing like having a live Christmas tree in your, in your home. Um, you know, if you're going to go that route, um, obviously the best thing to do is get one that you can replant out in your yard and, and basically recycle it, if you will. Um, you know, so a, an actual real live one with the root ball and everything. And, uh, that would you know, keep it, that would prevent it from drying out. It's, that would definitely help. And, you know, it'll come wrapped in burlap and what have you, and you can keep that damp. And, and, uh, again, once Christmas is over, you can put that out in your yard and plant it and, um, you know, live that memory, uh, you know, every day from now on. Um, but if you don't, if you choose a, a pre-cut, um, it's very important that when you get that, uh, that tree home to get it in water and get it soaking up water. Um, it is incredible the amount of water those things will soak up once you put them uh, in a water bucket or in a, in a source where they can get water. And that is gallons a day of, uh, of water. Um, if you do not keep your tree very moist, it will dry out very quickly. And those, uh, those pine uh, needles will burn almost like gasoline. They will burn wow. extremely quick and uh, will definitely catch your house on fire if something would go wrong. Does a light, a Christmas light have the capability of doing anything if it's sitting there long enough? Um, normally the light will not, and in particularly the LEDs. The LEDs are great because they uh, are such low amperage and, and such uh, they burn so cool compared to the old uh, incandescent lights. But, um, it, you know, a short in one of those lines, and, you know, a lot of those cords are very lightweight. Uh, you know, they're made for just temporary use. And so uh, one of those cords is very easy to get frayed, and so that fray could short and cause a, cause a fire. Okay, very good. Let's move on to the next one. Chief, does the fire department have any special learning programs for children? If so, please explain. Sure, we uh, we go into all of the uh, the schools that are in the city of Temple. That includes both uh, uh, TISD and and uh, BISD schools, um, and do uh, fire programs uh, every month of the year. Um, I've got two fire uh, uh, training specialists. Uh, one is Thomas Peckhall that uh, you've right. talked with on several occasions, and I think everybody in Temple and Belton knows Thomas. Uh, and then our uh, our newest uh, addition to that group is uh, Buzzy Gover, uh, or the former Coach Gover, uh, or Coach Buzz. Um, they both get out and do uh, uh, not only fire safety topics and talks, but uh, life safety topics uh, uh, having to do with riding your bike or car seats or uh, the dangers of drinking and driving and all of, all of the other things that uh, we encounter throughout our lives. Um, and we try to hit those at those special times of the year. So, you know, we'll do pool safety uh, as it starts to get warmer and bicycle safety. And, you know, the recent message, of course, has been uh, trick-or-treating safety so right. and fire safety. So uh, we have a program that last year round in, in the schools. Very good. Okay, Chief. Now, you've got some explaining to do on this one here. I saw a picture of one of your firefighters wearing um, let's say a bra. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> what gives on that? Here's the picture right here. It looks kind of good there though, but yeah, what's the deal? Well, uh, I guess the good thing here is it's not actually one of mine, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is one of our neighboring departments. And it, what that was was a benefit to benefit breast cancer. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, most departments uh, nationwide have has uh, adopted breast cancer awareness as one of our uh, charitable. Uh, uh, things that we do uh, to go along with MDA and some of the other charitable functions that uh, the firefighters do. Um, obviously, we all have wives and daughters, and, and it's something that we all worry about for them. Um, and also, you know, one of the things that I don't think uh, most folks realize is that men are uh, just as susceptible to get breast cancer as women are. Um, it's just not as uh, well known of a problem. So, uh, you know, we're all very cognizant of that. And uh, so we do want to bring awareness to that. And that's what that uh, that actually was there was a decorated bra that they were trying to auction off. And um, he was doing a very good job of uh, trying to boost the, the cost there. And if I remember right from the article I read on it, uh, I think he actually got the highest amount. For I, think the bra, was, so. I think that's correct. Too. Yeah, he's so. totally motivated. That's, yeah. that's great. Okay, um, we're short on time here, so let me ask you this final question, mm-hmm. Chief. How do volunteer firefighters fit in when it comes to firefighting and rescue? I mean, how does that work when you yeah. say you know, employed firefighter as compared to a volunteer one? Well, in, in, you know, in Temple, everybody's a career firefighter, so everybody's a paid firefighter. That's what they do for their profession, and that's what their job is. Um, volunteer firefighters, however, are extraordinarily important to the United States and, and to Texas. Um, over 80% of the firefighters in the country are volunteer. They get no pay, no compensation for their response or their training. Um, and so the volunteer fire uh, service is very important, in particular in the rural areas where uh, the tax base uh, it just doesn't exist to support a full-time fire department. Because firefighting is expensive. It's uh, it's something that costs a lot of money, um, both to uh, to purchase the equipment, to, to uh, train the firefighters, to have them employed. It's, it's just, incredible. Just expensive. It's incredible too, because you get a cop on the beat, and somebody's shooting at him. He pulls out his gun and shoots back. You guys, you go 
to a place that people are running out of and run into it with axes. You know, uh-huh. it, it, I just don't get it, but that's cool. And I thank you guys very much for the courage to do that. Uh, Chief, we're out of time. But okay. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I appreciate you coming on, answering all these questions. I'm sure a lot of people didn't realize a lot of the stuff that you talked about. And I didn't get to the helmet, but we'll have to yep. do it another time. 